we were guests at a surfing and fishing camp located on a coastal river system close to a fringing reef. It's a venue that's fast gaining an international reputation as a popper casting hotspot for giant trevally or GTs. Nice fish. Hey. There's no doubt that the soft vibe phenomenon has taken Australian fishing completely by storm. From bass, golden perch and murray cod to flathead, threadfin salmon and mangrove jacks, these amazing lures are catching just about everything that swims in our waters. Watch and learn now as two of the finest exponents of soft vibing in the country today show you exactly how it's done. There's a lot of different ways you can use them, mate. Tell me your favourite way. Oh, mate, I don't really have a favourite. I'd probably say my favourite way is what the fish like on the day, but that varies between whether we want them to look like a, whether we want them to look like a dying bait fish, or we want them to, we might want to twitch them fast in short spurts to make them look like a prawn kicking, or just depends, I suppose, what the fish are feeding on and what they like on the day. Once we pick up what their mood is and what they want, then we'll stick with that technique. You need to be thinking about what you're doing all the time, and you need to know where your lure is in the water column. And if you do that, you're going to find get sensational results with, uh, with these transams and I just love using them because they catch everything. Any serious rock or inshore wash fishing session typically starts with a little hands-on bait gathering. Instead of fishing from the rock ledges themselves as we so often do, Andrew and I have opted to head out of the river mouth in his boat and anchor within casting distance of those same aerated wash zones. How yeah, they bite so softly sometimes. Oh, nice brown. And he's just pinned in the lip. This is basic bait fishing at its best. Whatever you want to call them, Gorilla Elevata. And here we go. Ah, oh, well done, mate. <laughs> is he pulling a bit? Oh. oh, he's a big brown. Hold your thumb up, grab the lead line on the outside, keep your hand up and slowly walk the net into your hand. Now the trick is to cast it. You just basically throw it like you're throwing an oversized frisbee. Like that. That's about half a kilo of banana prawns, which is a good catch. No matter what style of fishing you're into or where you come from, that last couple of hours of a run out tide is prime flathead time. They are confined to a smaller area and are usually sitting at obvious ambush points. Nice flatty. Nice fish. There she goes. Haha, <laughs> great stuff. Rigging weedless or snag proof opens up areas previously out of reach to conventional lures or baits. Pike can grim, everything he sees lures. Brett, look at that. Yeah, little pike The first time you try it, you'll be amazed. Clearly this puts a lot of once uncatchable fish within range of accurate pinpoint casts. By gently pulling the rig plastic up and over the submerged branches, you can work your lures through the thickest cover without snagging, and this is often where the biggest fish live. This technique has the potential to revolutionise your soft plastic nice fishing. Fish. I love fishing weedless, it's just really get it in there and walk it through the snag. It's a very typical weedless rig hookup, right in the hinge. Yes. Oh, better fish, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, he's getting in there. He was in there. <laughs> he knew where the home was. We can see your fish wasn't going to come out of there in a hurry. <laughs> Have a look at that. He was making a tennis racket. Uh, he's in, getting in there. Oh, that's it, straight up. Where's the honey? Hey, look <laughs> at that! <laughs> that is what small creek fishing out of a canoe is all about. 